This is exactly what John says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. This is love. Not that we've loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a, the propitiation for our sins. There's that word again. It's wrapped up in the very definition of love and who God is. His propitiation, His atoning sacrifice, His substitutionary work on the cross on our behalf was done because He loves us, not in order so that we could become lovable. Do you see the order of that? He doesn't love you because Christ died for you. Christ died for you because He loves you. This is absolutely crucial for us to understand. David Wells puts it this way. It is in the substitutionary death of Christ that sin is overcome and wrath averted. So that, and don't miss this, this is the key. This is the key. So that God can look at man without displeasure and man can look at God without fear. Do you see that? That's what happened on the cross. That's what propitiation means. It means to appease anger. And sin is expiated and God is propitiated. Expiation means that our sin is dealt with. It's taken away. It's it's separated as far as from the east as from the west on the cross. And it's no longer a barrier between you and God. It isn't. And propitiation means that God is is no longer looks at you and, and says these words, you did this. And there is no health in you. There's nothing between you and God now. Because Christ has atoned and substituted for your sin. He's appeased his Father's own justice. There's nothing left that could be done. This is why Christ on the cross uttered these words. It is finished. It's done. There's nothing for you to do except receive that which he has to offer. (laughs) But we hold back. You know, we finished praying as as the praise team and, and I right before service starts after they get done with rehearsal and we're all in a big group and we're all holding hands and Andrew's uh, daughter Ava is about this tall and she's got her cute little red hair and she's holding it. She's in the, in the circle like Cindy Lou Who in, in the Grinch. <laughs> and we all got done praying and we prayed and, and she was over there and I was standing here and I'm, Andrew's right next to me and she We got done praying. We said, amen. And she looked up at her daddy and she just ran to him. And she just grabbed his legs. And that's what the father wants. But we look at him and we go, he's still mad at me. He's going to hit me. He's going to show me the cross and say, you did that. That's not the cross. That's not why he died. He died so that you could run to him, so that you could take your, all of your sin, all of it, all of it, and run to him and just throw your arms around his legs and say, Dad, I love you. Thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for making a way for me to come back. That's what propitiation is. That's what expiation is. Our sin has been dealt with. It's, 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 it's no longer a barrier. Even the stuff that we haven't yet done is no longer a barrier. All we have to do is just simply own it. Say, I made another mess, Dad. I climbed another wall, Dad. That's, that's all he wants. That's all he wants. Why does this matter? It matters because if you see Christ as just your example, you'll never draw near to him. Never. If you see Christ as just your example, you cannot and will not, nor will you ever draw near to him. You'll just sit here and feel bad because you don't measure up. And you don't, and neither do I. And if you see the Father as constantly anger, angry, I guarantee you, you will never draw near. 
and you'll never be made whole. But if you see Christ as your advocate, if you see Jesus Christ, the righteous, as your advocate, and you see him as the propitiation for your sins, not because he did this because you're so wicked and you did this to him, but he did this because out of his infinite love for you, he made a way for you to draw near to the Father and experience the love and experience the fellowship and experience the fullness and experience the joy. That's what the cross is. That's what the cross is. Have you trusted Christ? Have you come to grace before, and this is not the first time you've heard this message, but you've always been just a tad reluctant, you're just not ready? Come to Christ now. You say, but I'm not clean yet. You will never be clean. Come to Him with all of your sin, with all of your shame, with all of your degradation, all of those things. You come with everything. You come with your anger. You come with your malice. You come with your, with your lust. You come with your addictions. You come with it all. If you wait until you are well, you will never come. 